Hi. In a previous video, I told you about picking the right torque for your servo. In this video, I will tell you about the top 12 factors, in addition to the torque, that you should consider when shopping for servos to use in a robotic project. Let's start with the easy stuff. There was a time when analog servos were a cheaper alternative for digital servos. But there is really no reason to buy an analog servo in today's market. And you should avoid analog servos altogether. You should always go for a servo with metal gears and stay away from plastic gears. Unless in very rare situations when there is so little or no load at all on the servo. Servo cover material is very important for high torque servos. Because of the high reduction gearbox in these servos, they get very hot very quickly and heat dissipation is critical. So if you want your servo to last, you should always go for a servo with metal cover. For any high torque application, go with a servo with dual ball bearings. It will save the gears from getting damaged easily under heavy load. Especially in applications with repeated impacts, like in a walking robot. Deadband is related to how accurate a servo holds its position. For any robotic application, make sure that your servo has a deadband of 4 microseconds or less. This gets very important in a legged robot because the error of each servo along a single leg adds up for the final leg position. For robotic projects, you should go with a servo that comes with a circular servo. This may sound weird and not relevant at first, but I think it is critical for a good servo calibration. Let me explain. Calibrating a servo means to measure the value of the servo at two separate angles and then doing a linear regression for a more accurate position. And it is critical not to remove the horn from the servo after doing the measurements. With a circular horn, you can attach the horn to the next robot part on any angle that you like, just by rotating the holes on the next part. With a long aluminum horn, this gets way more complicated. The first six factors were the most important ones, that I have a strong preference towards one of the options. The next six factors are still important, but they turn into a trade-off, and they depend on the situation and your particular project. You should usually go with a smaller rotation angle if it works for your project. A smaller rotation angle will give you a smaller step size and a more precise positioning as a result. You should pick the servo voltage based on the battery voltage that you're planning to use. Also, if you're using different servos in your project, make sure they all operate on the same voltage. These two points are very important to simplify your design. Weight of the servo is one of the important factors that usually gets ignored. In a walking robot, the torque to weight ratio is way more important than just the torque value. So if you have multiple options to pick from, pick the servo with higher torque to weight ratio. In a specific price range, it is usually a trade-off between the servo's speed and its torque. And most manufacturers use the same motor with different reduction rates to offer different speed and torque options. In a leg drawback, I would pick a servo speed of at least one rotation per second or faster. If you have options, pick the motor type based on this ranking. Most cheaper waterproof servos are only splash proof and won't last long if submerged under the water. But still you should go for a waterproof servo if you can, because it will still protect your servo from water splashes and even other harmful elements like dust, especially if you're planning to use your robot outside. Now let's see how the servos that I'm using in my hexapod stack up against these factors. 
Well, that was it. I hope these 12 points helps you pick the right server order for your projects. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.